Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. In this video I have for you game one of a best of three between ZZ and Prester John in the playoffs of season two of the Steel Division League. In this one they are playing on Shedrin and both players have decided to play on the allied side. So on the left, in on the red team, we have ZZ using the 26th Guards Rifles. And on the right, in the blue team, we have Prester John using the 3rd US Armoured. There are, of course, bands for both maps and divisions. Let me go through those. The maps, the map bands are for the entire best of three series between these two. So the map bands from ZZ were Gula Calvaria, Ostrovno and Haroshaye, and then Prester John banned Orsha East, Orsha North, and Krupa. Then the division bans for this game specifically Prester John banned ZZ from playing the 3rd Guards Tank Corps, the 2nd French Armoured, the 44th Guards, as well as the 9th Guards Cavalry. And then ZZ banned Prester John from playing the 26th Guards Rifles, the 84th Guards Rifles, the 3rd Guard Tank Corps, and the 2nd French. So, we are left with 26th versus 3rd US. And the 26th, ZZ managed to sneak that through uh, because Prester John didn't ban it. And it's deemed to be one of the best 1v1 divisions at the moment because the 26th has a bunch of fantastic units. It's got the IL-2 with the 37mm guns, which is great for breaking down enemy armor. Uh, you've got the IS-1 in phase A, which is very strong, as well as the KV-85s, which also match up well uh, to both Axis and, in this case, Allied armor. Um, you have all of your great infantry and support weapons, like the OBs and the AT guns, the 45mm AT guns, and... Yeah, it's just all round a very, very strong division. Also, great artillery, of course, with the 203 and 280 millimeter howitzers. On the side of the third US, you, of course, still have some great options. There are the armored units. Uh, you've got the M8s, uh, which would work quite well in an allied versus Axis matchup, but we've seen they don't really work too well in an allied versus allied matchup because of PTRDs and the abundance of AT rifles on Soviet units. But... They also have M4s, of course, and the upgraded M4s with extra armor, uh, upgraded M4s with the 76mm gun, and also, of course, jumbos. Now, jumbos could be really, really tough for a Soviet division to deal with, so that's going to be interesting to see if Prester John makes use of those. Um, otherwise, uh, there's strong artillery in the form of the mortar carriers. They've got the priests, so very, very difficult to counter battery the 3rd US. And furthermore, the Calliope. A Calliope is really, really nice for setting up a strong push. So in a 1v1, I wouldn't be surprised to see them come out in phase A even. But anyway, uh, let's see what's going down. On the left side here, we have ZZ. On the top, he's going to be using three units of Ognemachiki. These are the uh, two-man flamer squads. Behind those, a unit of Avtos. Uh, these are the ten-man squads with AT grenades and the Gavardia DP rifle squad there with the extra machine guns. Further down we see two units of Avtos followed up by a unit of Flamers, the 45mm AT gun, two more Avtos, two Gavardia, Gavardia DP and the VZ VOD UPR. That's going to be the artillery commander, 10-man infantry squad. Then on the bottom side we're seeing the use of Oknemachiki. It's going to be two units of Gavardia DP, two units of standard Gavardia, two of the OB-25s, the 76mm infantry guns they are, Another Gavardi actually there as well. Uh, the IS-1 is coming out from the start as well as a ZIS-3. Now the ZIS-3 is actually a really nice gun for Phase A because it kind of acts like an infantry gun. You can fire both AP and HE shells. On the side of Prester John, we have a bunch of the heavy flamethrowers on the bottom side here as well as that being followed up by two bazookas. Behind we have the M1 gun. There's going to be four M8 Greyhounds recon variants and three Stuarts followed up by a M21 mortar carrier and a bunch of armoured rifles. A strong push coming through on the bottom side for Prester John. Into the town it's just going to be engineers, two engineers there and the armoured rifles and into the town also go a couple of heavy flamethrowers. The heavy flamethrowers are two-man flamer squads on the US side. 
Now those engineers I think are coming in M3 half tracks, the armoured rifles appear to be coming in M3A1 half tracks, the difference being the M3 half tracks only have a 30 cal, the M3A1 half tracks have a 50 cal. Well this is going to be an interesting engagement, Oknemachiki are going to unload, oh nice dodge there with the flamethrower at the start. That's going to allow the Oknema Cheeky to get run down. The M8s are certainly going to just drive through them. It's an interesting start. These M8s have got to be really, really careful. They don't get picked off, though, by the OBs. That could end really, really badly. Also, the Gavardia, of course, having its PTRD there is going to cause issues. The Ziz-3 started to fire at the M1 gun. There's nothing really for the M1 gun to target at the moment. Nothing really happening on the top there. But we're seeing all of the infantry that travelled up just bumped into ZZ's convoy and that unloaded loads of avtos next to those two-man squads and they got absolutely annihilated. One of the Stuarts is going to go down, so is the AT gun behind it. The infantry guns, of course, getting the better of an AT gun. Now it's just the heavy flamethrower versus the Oknemachiki. And it looks like Presta John's coming out on top in terms of territory on this bottom side, but has completely lost control of the middle of the map so far, which is pushing ZZ to a 13 to 11. Now these MH just about managing to stay alive, two of them have already died. Uh, but you can see the Gavardia DP here with the PTRD is going to start trying to pop those half tracks sooner than later to avoid them providing too much cover for the armoured rifles. The M5A1s probably want to push forwards and, and get involved sooner than later. The M21 mortar carrier is actually going to be trying to hit the IS-1 there and we do see the P47D coming in with its 50 cows to try and strafe this 45mm AT gun. I think it lost line of sight, so couldn't quite get the strafing run off. Now Presta John going to be trying to push into the centre with a couple of M4A1s, bringing two more M5A1 Stuarts to the bottom side. Meanwhile, ZZ has reinforced with three T-34Es, make that five T-34Es on the bottom side with the Gavardia there. T-34Es, they do have the 90mm of frontal armour, which is very nice. Lovely strafing run onto the Zis-3, can do plenty of damage. A second run onto that Zis-3 might just take care of it. These half-tracks, though, are very exposed at the moment. The T-34s are going to be engaging those from a distance. These M5A1s also now cannot move up too far, otherwise they will also die to the T-34s. I'm really surprised to see Presta John making use of the M5A1s. In certain maps, I can see they're being useful, but... I would say in most maps, uh, they are pretty much just cannon fodder for most of what you'd come up against. Like even on an Axis division, Panzer Fours would easily just chew up a bunch of Stuarts. Uh, in this case, T-34E is almost impossible for an M5A1 to go up against. But the armoured rifle is really not surviving too well. One of the Stuarts has gone down. The M21's trying to do its best to mortar these infantry guns, but ZZ keeping them on the move. Strafing run comes in from the P-47, doesn't actually get the kill, that's rather unfortunate for Presta John. And now ZZ has managed to get an M-15 on the field to back himself up. The US are certainly regretting lend-leasing uh, the M-15 to the enemy right now. <laughs> Either way, M-5A1 continues its machine gun fire there. Actually, it's I think it's engaged in T-34 from a distance. Yeah, that's not good. And down it goes. P-47, going to be trying to strafe some of the infantry. Again, I think it lost line of sight, so it didn't complete its strafing run. M3 half-track, and not quite over the crest of that hill. I'm probably going to get taken out by that 45 mil. So the heavy flamethrower managing to sit on top of that flag for now. But the Gavani are just walking around them rather than engaging, which is... Okay, uh, it just needs to make sure that he gets that into cover sooner than later, which can be difficult in this area. Uh, these half-tracks can probably just uh, rip that unit to pieces. <laughs> well, and so can the P-47. And the armored rifles making short work of the Gavardia DP as they push up. And at sort of the mid medium range, the armored rifles can be very, very deadly. So you can see this Gavardia squad, especially with no cover, is taking a lot of damage now from the 16 armored rifles there. Gavardia DP coming under fire from the heavy flamethrower. Nice micro so far from Presta John with these flamethrowers, that's for sure. Got the strafing run continuing on to the Gavardia, but there are so many T-34Es building up. Got some Chernos now coming in from ZZ. It's followed up by a 122mm off map. Going to be a T-34 coming into the center. And the 45 mils. oh no, that took out one of the M4A1s. I think Presta John's... Uh, trying to hold on to the bottom here, but 
is really, really losing ground very, very quickly. They're both playing with a Vanguard deployment type. I didn't mention this at the start of the game, but if one player does fault in the early game, that advantage for the other player is only going to continue for the rest of the game because they have a similar deployment type. So this is all coming down to these initial engagements and Presta John doesn't see a way out of it is actually going to surrender his first game after five minutes and 57 seconds it was certainly looking very dire but I can't help but question why you wouldn't bring a jumbo in that scenario um and there are certain unit choices I think that Presta John certainly missed out on taking advantage of especially with like a vanguard deployment type I think a jumbo is 110 points you get 150 points per minute you could definitely stack in a vanguard division your jumbos in phase a and really make a strong play from that uh, in order to get a great presence for the rest of the game uh, whereby you can make use of your great infantry your great um, armor and maybe some of your air force I'm not a massive fan of the US Air Force in this game because the p47s aren't as good at strafing as they used to be as we saw by them struggling to kill that as this three uh, they can sometimes get the two shot strafing runs but in that case it took almost four to try and take out as this three and um the rocket planes that they have aren't terribly effective like the p47s with the rockets on um the p51s get shot down very easily um, so yeah, their air force kind of is a bit limited, but the rest of the stuff, especially their ground forces, I reckon could be extremely strong in an allied versus allied matchup. The jumbo is just like smacking T-34s could certainly be something that, you know, you could take advantage of, whereas a jumbo normally wouldn't be able to get through a panther or a, um, a panther or a tiger. It could certainly get through like a T-34-85. It might struggle against IS-2s, of course, but um, that is, I guess, something that you kind of take for granted. Either way, ZZ, 580 kills to 200 losses, pretty much tells the story of how Presser John felt at the end of that one. Um, he certainly lost a lot very quickly, um, but it again, I think it comes down, down to unit choices. Uh, both the M5 Stuarts and the m8 greyhounds very very vulnerable to at rifles so maybe this is something to do with like an inexperience of allied versus allied matchups but yeah i think that's something that I a lot of players are going to have to start thinking about especially if these uh, rules create these kind of matchups but i assume this is a similar map like this, this this sort of thing did happen during the league anyway um but yeah Kills, let's have a look. The IS-1, of course, proving a valuable asset to ZZ, getting plenty of kills. We've got the 45mm AT gun on that top side, the two-star AT gun. This seems like something that players are doing now is bringing in the, the 45 mils at two-star veterancy on their own. Uh, so there's no leader near that. It's just two-star straight out of the gate. Really nicely done. Uh, takes out the M8s and the M3 and the M4A1. Uh, I think it got a side shot into the M4A1 whilst Presta John wasn't paying attention. The T-34E is easily trumping the M5A1s and uh, basically it means that Presta John's getting no value out of his units and in the end only killed an OB-25 and the 45 mil and a few units of infantry. So yeah, tough game for Presta John in the start of this series. But hopefully he can come back in game two and uh, provide us uh, with a comeback, which would be awesome in this best of three series. But that's it. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.